the St. Lawrence Seaway, the seaway that connects the Atlantic Ocean and the Great Lakes, that saw $16.7 billion worth of cargo go through it last year, and a seaway that supports two-thirds of Canada's population and 75% of the manufacturing volume has shut down. Early this morning, or Sunday, October 22nd, 2023, hundreds of workers walked off the job after deciding to go on strike. On October 18th, 2023, Unifor, a private sector union that represents more than 315,000 workers and fights for equality and social justice, issued a 72-hour strike notice. Unifor has insisted on wage increases for the Seaway workers until an agreement can be reached between U4 and the St. Lawrence Seaway Management Corporation, the Seaway will remain shut down. The progress on an agreement remains slow. On October 20th, the St. Lawrence Seaway Management Corporation said that they are committed to reaching an agreement, but the wage increase demands could mean higher tolls. The Management Corporation worked on negotiations up to the last minute of the strike, but none were successful. As far as vessel traffic goes, ships were given a 72-hour notice period to clear the seaway before the strike. Currently, many vessels are anchored on the seaway, waiting for a negotiation to be reached. The St. Lawrence Seaway plays a huge part in both the U.S. and Canada's economy, as it supports two-thirds of Canada's population. The seaway saw $16.7 billion worth of cargo move through it last year, mostly iron ore and grain. Iron ore plays a major role in the economy, as it is the main ingredient in steel. Grain also is a major cargo shipped on the seaway, and cargoes of it move through it, destined for countries in need of food. With the war in Ukraine, which is a major exporter of grain, shipments of grain have been severely disrupted. With the Great Lakes having many grain exporting ports, it has made up for the disruption in shipments to a degree. Now with the strike, vessels with grain cannot move through the seaway and out of the seaway, which means they cannot get their cargoes to their ports of call. This could be detrimental not only for the U.S. and Canada, but for the world. To compensate, the Canadian Federation of Independent Business is calling on the Canadian government to keep the seaway operational while the negotiations continue. Currently, none have been reached. Anyway, subscribe for more shipping updates, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.